I think especially as Aboriginal artists, our truth is what makes us who we are in our culture and our spirituality. And that truth that resonates into the community. Mob or judge them, that's tomorrow's children. Because all we do is for them, really. And if they can get these words, get the pronun pronunciation of it correct, yeah. they can then start using it in, in daily life, and they do. It's, you know? it's relationships between mothers and fathers, between parents and children between children and their grandparents. It's, it's that deterioration of that family relationship and connection. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people can now stand with uh, huge humility and, and be very proud of who we are and what we are and the way in which we have uh, survived. <laughs> Hello, I'm Fred Leone. And I'm Mandanara Bales. We'd like to welcome you to the very first episode of Beyond the Boundary Road. On this program, we will be exploring the revitalisation and sustainability of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander languages of South East Queensland, as well as learning about some exciting cultural activities. Also, you'll be hearing from some inspirational role models and everyday people telling us about the difference they are making in our society. Yeah. Speaking of inspirational, our very first guest for the show is an accomplished historian, Indigenous author, Indigenous rights activist, and a consultant for Indigenous affairs. She has served on many boards, including the Council of Reconciliation, and was awarded the Order of Australia in 2001. It is our honour and a privilege to welcome Dr Jackie Huggins to the show. Annie Jackie is here to talk with us about reconciliation. So welcome to the show, Art. Thank yeah, you, lovely to be board. here. Thank you. So can we start with telling us who your mob is and where you grew up? Yes. Uh, my mob are Bidjara on my mother's side from Carnarvon Gorge, central Queensland. And my father's side is Birigabajuru from Air North Queensland. So uh, I guess you could call me a Murray through and through. That's yeah. Honey, we might kick it off with a big question. What does NAIDOC week mean to you? NAIDOC week uh, means uh, many things to me, but uh, the most of all I think is that uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people can now stand with uh, huge humility and, and be very proud of who we are and what we are and the way in which we have uh, survived the onslaught of colonisation and uh, the many things that that's brought with it. Um, our resilience, our uh, humour, our way of being, I think, is uh, very much, for me, uh, fundamental, and I think that stuff should be celebrated, not only during NAIDOC week, but uh, throughout the rest of our lives. And I hope that, you know, the wider society will come to appreciate all those wonderful facets of our culture that, um, that we have within our own communities here, and particularly that in the South East Queensland region. Yeah. Yeah. In, in your view, Art, is NAIDOC week um, a part of reconciliation? It certainly is, and, and quite, uh, quite sincerely, it was way before uh, reconciliation was even uh, termed as a, a, as a, a phrase or a, a term. So um, it has to do with bringing people together, and of course in reconciliation that's what we all try to do, irrespective of our culture, our race, our age, um, where we come from. It's about, you know, building bridges and bringing people closer. Um, but also, at the same time, it's not a soft issue, is reconciliation. Reconciliation is about, you know, facing the true facts of our history and how that has impacted on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in our communities. But to get uh, non-Aboriginal people to have a deep uh, understanding but also an appreciation of uh, what this all means in the in the wider scheme of things. So um, yes, NAIDOC week is very much a, funda a fundamental part of um, the reconciliation movement and uh, I'm just so glad it's uh, embedded there forever and a day now. Yeah. Hmm. What's the most, what do you find the most enjoyable part of um, NAIDOC week? Like, um, I know a lot of elders come out and oh, I get to sit there and hear a lot of stories and have a laugh and, you know, they tell me some funny things I never would have known about some old uncle and aunties or mum even, you know, and, um, yeah, that's a big thing for me, seeing, get to see family because everybody comes out and they all want to come down to Brisbane's, but that's a highlight for me. I was just wondering what's what's one of the mm -hmm. things that you look forward to seeing or hearing every, every NAIDOC. 
That's, uh, that's true, Fred, around uh, the stories of the elders and um, I know both our families are from Sherberg and quite often uh, people are able to travel down from Sherberg and uh, come and share at Musgrove Park, particularly on that Friday, which is the big day. Uh, for me, it's about the networking and going to the park and uh, going to various events around town here in uh, Brisbane or if I'm travelling, I try to get to uh, NADOC celebrations in various parts of the country. Like uh, last year, I was in a place called Roeburn, WA, and they had a NADOC uh, uh, celebration day at the uh, at the Aboriginal Medical Service there and had some bush tucker. I think um, <clears throat> when we talk about um, close the gap or closing the gap mm. and your work and involvement with Reconciliation Australia, what were some of the methods or some of the your priorities on your agenda in terms of um, you know tackling that close the gap? Well fundamental to um, all close the gap issues is the um, it is the importance of land and sea to country. Uh, the way that uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have connection to land and um, also the sea as well. Um, and to uh, think about our history in terms of how old it is. Uh, you know, tens and tens of thousands of years old, uh, as we know, you know, the oldest surviving living culture on the planet. Um, that we are. So in Reconciliation um, Australia in the early days, um, we started off uh, gathering statistics around about um, our population, um, our rates, imprisonment, all the social indicators, you know, and as you know, we've got the highest uh, rates of uh, people in prisons. And, um, you know, while we have a very um, small population, etc., etc. You know, the um, people know the statistics, and sometimes I think um, that's been our challenge in reconciliation because uh, people are aware of the horrible statistics that our people face, and sometimes they can become numb and immune to it. You know, I'm talking about the wider community, and they think, well, oh, well, you know, that's uh, that's really bad, but what can I do about it? Well, you know, there are many things people can do about it. So it's about um, making reconciliation to a people's movement and bringing in all those white fellas that said, well, I don't really know what to do. So, uh, you know, it was more about even walking across bridges and uh, shaking hands. It was about really getting into the deep relationships and uh, um, doing reconciliation action plans, which I think are, are very important these days. But back in the old day, we were just trying to even uh, educate um, people around our issues. Um, because as we know, um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander history was not included in the, um, in the curriculum at that time. It is now, um, but still we've got a long way to go. But we were starting, I guess, from um, a very low base, but not to say that there hadn't been great work done before that. You know, we'd, saw, we, we, we'd seen the 1967 referendum, we'd seen people uh, coming together, both um, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people, to fight for justice for our people. So um, we were just trying to uh, build a picture, I guess, you know, back then. We had a lot of challenges because in those days, you know, we had the native title, the WIC, um, Mabo decision, the stolen generation, you know, all those really high political events at the time and how we were able to make sense and push our way through that, but at the same time maintain a level of dignity was always a challenge for us. And there were 24 members on council, half were Indigenous, half were non-Indigenous people. And, uh, you know, together we all, um, uh, tried to do our best in terms of raising the bar and raising the profile to where I think it is now, but it can get better, you know, but there's a lot more awareness of uh, when I started out in the Council for Aboriginal Reconciliation in the early 90s. I think yeah. um, in saying that, Annie Jackie, so much work has been done in, in that space of those reconciliation action plans, and it's mm. amazing. Mm. A lot of the big corporate companies and government organisations and stuff are really taking it on board to roll mm. out their wraps. So um, it must be a really good feeling to say that you're a part of that movement and still a part of um, you know, bringing people together. So mm. I guess on that note, we'd like to say thank you very much for coming on the show today mm. and sharing your story, your involvement, and um, we wish you all the best. Thank you. And yeah, thanks for, thanks and for coming And all the very best to you too.
It's a great program. Thank, Thank you, you very much.